Mo. My brother, you know how he comes to my house all the time, but he only comes when he needs to do his laundry? Yeah. Well, he came and he left this huge box in the front, the foyer. That's and huge. He... <laughs> how are you managing to carry that? Do you need some help? Absolutely. Let me help you. Whoa! <laughs> There's a toothpick in there. Okay, in my new clean house, this is huge. And when, wow. it's, when I come out of my bedroom and I trip on it, it's huge. My brother, he comes to visit out here in Palm Desert probably once every couple of months just to do his laundry because his apartment building has no laundry. So he came one day and he brought this huge box and dumps it in my foyer and he says, anything in that box you can have. This thing, is this cute? Do you know what it is? A hair. <laughs> it looks like a coat rack. Carmen? That's what I meant. Good job. <laughs> you have learned so much from being yeah. here. Um, okay, so you think it's a coat rack? What kind of a coat rack? A wooden one. <laughs> a wooden um, antique coat rack. Nice, nice. And look at it folds, so what does that make it? A folding coat rack. <laughs> nice. Or a hat rack, and isn't it cute? It's got, you know, it's got brass and all this. And anyway, when you see all these, it actually, it was up on the wall in my grandma's house. Oh. And she used it for stuff. So in that box was this wooden hat rack. And it was really cool because it was a, um, a folding hat rack. So the arms came out and then they went back in. So it would, it would go up against the wall when you weren't using it. And I recognized it. It had actually been in my grandmother's house. It had belonged to her, but he didn't want it anymore. And it was free to me, but it's, it's really darling. And, you know, I didn't know if I should sell it or what I should do with it, but he was going to throw it away. He was going to give it to charity. Really? Yeah, and he just, he dropped it off in exchange for laundry. So I think we should sell it. Try to sell it. So I put it on um, online auction, and I called it Mission slash Art Deco. It was really right in between the two periods. You know, Mission is a very sleek period where things were real um, linear and, and real boxy. And, you know, Art Deco is real kind of geometric, round circles, things like that. And so this, to me, was a real mixture of both Art Deco and Mission, and it was made of oak, which is a very, very Mission-type um, wood. So I listed it with kind of both of those genres in the title. Within a week, I get an offer for 95 dollars and I'm like mom should I take it it belonged to grandma what do you think she's like a hundred bucks take it and I I think I asked Mo and she's like take it I think oh I know I asked Carmen she goes yes sell it so took the $95 another free thing hundred bucks it's amazing so you know the free stuff take the free stuff try it on eBay then if it doesn't sell then you don't eat Carmen yeah. and Mo yeah. mom I, I remember all those antiques the big truck I bought the Truck, I got it pulled around. Will you help me unload it? Sure. Sure. So my mom and I went to Palm Springs yesterday. Okay. And um, it's this really great antique dealer, and he's got all sorts of good stuff. You've seen all the good stuff. Yeah. That we've been selling. And um, what they do for us is they put out tables full. Mm -hmm. And then they say, okay, we want this much money, and then we kind of negotiate. And right. I and I try to buy it by the piece, but it's really he, he's got such great stuff. He knows everything about everything. Before he does that he has to go through every piece and say how much this was worth what he paid for that gives you the history so that's these. like his thing yeah Aww. it's just babies so yeah cute. it reminds me of grandma so I know. much yeah he's very knowledgeable Usually the Palm Springs dealers are really overly fair with me when I go to buy from them. But for some reason, I had told them I hadn't been selling very much lately, and so I think they felt badly. So when they put all the stuff out on the table this time and we had agreed upon a price, he kept saying, are you happy, are you happy, are you happy? I'm like, yes, I'm happy, I'm happy. And he kept throwing stuff in. He threw in a plateau mirror. And then as I'm getting ready to leave, he's like, would you like this cookie jar? I'm like, sure, I'll take it. Then he's like, do you want this metal ashtray? Do you want this, do you want this? I'm like, okay, enough, enough, I'm very happy. So it was so funny this time because on the floor, or these boxes of prisms, and he's like, <laughs> the, do you want the prisms? After my mom spent 40 hours saw, writing up what I, I bought last time. Oh, your prisons, heart must have, and, oh, uh, no. and, and I go, mom, what do you think, say about the prisms? And she goes, no. But you bought them. No em. more prisms. Uh-huh. <laughs> You should have known better to even well, ask. He, he actually threw them in at the end, so they yeah. were practically free. Lynn asked for a price without the prison. And then he threw them in. But, but he, yeah. So anyway, we have about 150 pounds of prisms that you're going to take home and list. <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't so you want to put them in your room with the flatware? Okay. All right, so here, let's check out what we got. So we're unloading. Okay, 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 I'm going to show you guys this thing. It's so cool. All right, oh, okay, wait, no, 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 you take that one. That is a really ugly piano. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, um, this this bunch of stuff I bought had a lot of cut glass in it, and normally I wouldn't buy cut glass, but there, there were like four signed pieces, and the signed pieces are gonna do better. It's some fun stuff, and you saw the pig. Oh, we didn't talk to I the pig. I think this is we? probably Shawnee. 
he said it was you he goes it's usa pottery but shawnee is a really great company that i collected yeah. what did you collect when pig? you were is little that, that's a pig is that a pig uh -huh. dust i think it is shawnee yeah i've seen that have you uh-huh nice okay carmen is quite the student there's some chips he showed us the chips and he threw it in at the last minute but shawnee can remember um the shawnee cookie jar you had at the Dutch camp yep 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 mm -hmm. and she was uh she sold for like 45. So we'll see what this, we'll do some research. But that cookie jar he threw in, Carmen researched it as soon as we got it to headquarters and it had just said USA on the bottom. And my gut feeling when I saw that USA was that it was Shawnee Pottery. Because when I was a kid, I, my grandma used to carry these books from this company called Collector's Books. They're still in business, Paducah, Kentucky. And we'd do orders and the books would come in and we'd have these risers when we'd go to do antique shows. And it was my job to put out all the books at the antique shows. And I was fascinated with these books. I wanted to learn and read all about all the different kinds of antiques. And one of the little tiny skinny books was about Shawnee Pottery. Shawnee began in 1937 in Zanesville, Ohio, where a lot of the famous pottery companies came from. And it was, it was in 1937 when, when World War II was just beginning, and a lot of Americans were feeling very upset with Europe and the Japanese and the Chinese and imports, and they decided that they wanted to start buying America. So when Shawnee started in 1937, it was the perfect time because Americans were ready to buy American. So Shawnee started selling to a lot of the five and tens, Woolworths, things like that. One of their very first items they released was a cookie jar. It was a pig, and that's the one we got. And the pig either had a red scarf or a blue scarf, and they used to sell a dozen cookie jars for $10. That was wholesale, and that's what they sold them to Woolworths and stuff for. So this was one of those original cold painted, and I'll tell you the difference between cold painted and fired in. Cold painted means that after it came out of the kiln, it was just kind of a cream color, and then they would paint on the red scarf on this pig. That's why our pig's scarf was really, there was not that much paint left. It was a cold painted piece. So it was one of the very old original pieces. And it was really fun. We got it listed at auction. It was chipped though. I, I think if it hadn't been chipped, we would have started it at maybe $49.99. But $24.99 on a free thrown in item at the end is awesome. Discover your hidden wealth with worthpoint.com, the best online resource for antiques and collectibles. At Worthpoint, we have something for everyone. We provide you with the knowledge and expertise to buy and sell with confidence. You'll get all the latest news, advice from our team of over 30 valuation experts, and access to the largest antiques and collectibles price guide, which details over 100 million items and more than 400 million images. You can get access to everything for as little as $9.99 a month. So join thousands of other members today at worthpoint.com and discover your hidden wealth. Hi, I'm Lynn Drawley, the Queen of Auctions, and here I am at Live Boot Camp in my headquarters, 2011, with my last best group ever. Let's give them a round of applause! <laughs> Cabbage.com is this really great company that allows you to borrow money based on your Amazon history, your eBay sales history, and other, other things, not so much your credit score. I just took out a $2,800 line of credit from Cabbage to buy a bunch of inventory, and one of my students is also going to use some Cabbage to grow her business. I just bought a screaming fast new computer that I'm paying for with Cabbage Cash. Very good, and I want you to check out Cabbage.com. Hi, I'm Lynn Drawley, the Queen of Auctions, and you're with me in my warehouse. This is actually the 8,000 things I have listed on eBay that make me a full-time living. I want to help you make a living on eBay, too. So I'm going to give you a copy of my first book, The 100 Best Things I've Sold on eBay, for free. All you have to do is visit our website and pay a shipping and handling fee, and we're going to send this book to you immediately. It's full of great stories. I got this catalog from my grandmother for free, sold for $77.50 on eBay. This $100 were paid for these lampshades, sold for $1,400. This book is filled with great stories, great tips and tricks, and I can't wait for you to get it. So please visit our website, pay that small shipping and handling fee, and get this book in the mail. I got a hateful, um, a hateful policy violation. Let's find it. Where, where, what, should we show it? No, maybe we shouldn't show it. We're, we're not going to show it. We're just going to discuss it. <laughs> okay, Mom. <laughs> well, we, yeah, it was offensive. It was, okay. That's so, racially offensive. So I listed something that I didn't, I didn't want to say anything racial about it. Right. Because I didn't want to offend anyone. So I said, it's a doll, wooden, jointed, and the colors he's painted black, white, and red. Mm -hmm. So someone emails me and they said, that's a very popular collectible. And it's called a... And I thought, I'd never heard that before. Maybe that's the kind of puppet it is. So I went in and I changed the title to And then I got shut down and I'm like, what did I do? I, I got a hateful 
And I think somebody Violation. was messing with you by telling Someone you that. Someone probably did mess with me, but it's funny. Before I listed it, I Googled and there was stuff on Tias, there was stuff on Price Miner, there was, it, it came up. Really? Yeah, so anyway, my bad. Well, it was, uh, um, the auction was on for a while before, before they shut it, shut it down. down. Yeah. Well, if you can sell Nazi memorabilia on there. Right, but there's really strict, re there's really strict regulations on Nazi memorabilia. You can only ship to like seven countries. There are certain countries you can't ship to. You have to put a disclaimer in your listing. They really, they really police that a lot. Hmm. Um, and then the second violation was those cups and saucers yeah that the guy had thought they were mycin right so you listed a mycin question mark yeah and it said because you don't know what this is and you put that in your title it's keyword spamming and what, what I was going to tell you is whenever you use a question mark put it at the at end, end like maker question okay. mark pattern question okay. mark and and I usually won't use a question mark if I'm not sure about the maker mm -hmm. like if I if I, if, I, if he had told me they were mycin I would I would have said mycin cup saucer set antique pattern question mark and then in my listing I would say the antique dealer I bought these from told me they were my son. right they have no marking they on have the no markings if you know the pattern please let us know so can we relist them yeah and absolutely just with take my out, son take out, let's take out the my son to be safe because okay. they're gonna watch those listings and we okay. will get shut down so take out the my son say antique cup saucer set floral um, 1880s help question mark maker question you know what I mean yeah then, okay. then we can do it and then I've gotten so much help on stuff right just from saying help question mark maker question mark. Yeah. I know you guys are all dying to know what that knitting machine sold for so I'm gonna tell you it's sold for forty seven dollars and fifty five cents and we shipped it to a lady in the Midwest and we were so excited that this piece of junk from my garage sold for almost fifty bucks and then Carmen gets an email and the lady says, it's damaged. Can you please file a claim? We're like, it's really, it probably wasn't damaged. She probably just didn't realize what bad condition it was in. So we filed the claim and Carmen emailed her and said, you're gonna have to hold on to it. UPS is gonna pick it up. And she's like, you mean I don't get to keep it and get my money back? No, you don't. And she goes, oh, you know what? All of a sudden, I think my husband can fix this. Anyway, the knitting machine sold almost 50 bucks, stayed with the buyer. We were very happy.